The thing I wanted to do more than anything was to fly a plane. I went to flight school, and in a year, I went from one flight hour to being a flight instructor. I had never been happy. And then September 11th happened, and that event made me reprioritize. I built a life that focused around my family. I blinked, and a decade had gone by, 14 years, and I realized it was now or never to go out and get a job where I was a pilot for an airline. I love that photo in Jersey City, New Jersey right now. Our captain, <laughs> Carol Hobson. Carol, congratulations on all of this. I love that you're sharing your story in your book. There's so many ways you've broken the rules, but starting with the age factor here, 36 years old, you decide, which is young, but still, as we know, to recreate or restart a career, 36. So you broke the rule with that. You were the rebel there at age. So first of all, thank you so much. I have to tell you, I've been watching your other guests, and it's been so exciting to see them. The young woman who was eight and uh, is, I can't wait to wear something that she has just like you have. I want to wear that on my layover. <laughs> I love it. Maya's fashions. But I mean, she started out at eight, age eight. You figure eight years old, you've got your whole life in front of you. 36, it's riskier to start a whole new career. It is. Sure, it's risky. But here's the other thing. I really thought about what was important to me and how could I live the rest of my life. So it wasn't just quitting because I left a six figure a year job. And I love the sentence. I say, I left a six-figure year job, and I made $17 an hour as my first job as a flight instructor. Wow. So while it's true that it was risky, the thought of doing or missing the opportunity to do what I always wanted to do was riskier. Wow. Okay, that's so and beautiful. So there you go. Listen, that was so beautiful. You should write a book, and I have it right in front of me. <laughs> and, you know, I got to tell you, too, you are breaking down the barrier in, in the world of aviation, particularly because with, with pilots, the airlines cast a net from the military. They typically hire f people who were formerly um, in the military, and that means the net includes a lot of men. And that's how women mm -hmm. also get filtered um, out of the process. So you are challenging the process as well. That's exactly right. You have hit on so many keys. So when you think about it, you say, well, how come there aren't more women doctors or more women scientists or more women engineers? It's the same thing. And this is our opportunity. So during the pandemic, or let me back up, before the pandemic, we had a pilot shortage. Then during the pandemic, when people weren't flying as much, we still had a pilot shortage. We just weren't flying as much. And now here we are, if you were to make a V-shaped recovery, we're on the other, almost on the other side. And people are eager to get back. And so I feel really good that the company I work for thought about that. And they took a business problem and they created a solution. And the solution was to buy a flight school. And that flight school started a program called Aviate. And their goal is this, by the end of the decade, they'd like to have 5,000 pilots hired and they'd like to have half of them wow. be women and people of minorities. Which is Since phenomenal. Which and is you, phenomenal. Are, you are backing at least 100 of those new faces um, that will go into flight school. People still stop you though, I know, when you're on the, on the flight and they think that you are the flight attendant, which is obviously an important role. They think, uh, but you have to sometimes still educate. No, I'm, I'm the pilot here, not in a defensive posture. But one, because you know, folks still are not accustomed to seeing a female pilot. So you said it, and I got I to gotta do a shout out to that photo. So the gentleman in that photo, his name is Captain Cleo Ratliff. He was my um, instructor in what we call IOE, which is your initial operating experience. And you're absolutely right. People stop me all the time. Can I have a coffee? I'd like a Coke. And this is what I say. Sure, we'll make sure that you get one. Um, I'll send someone from my crew to get you one. But being a flight attendant's awesome. And without right. them, oh my goodness, our lives would be very difficult. So, um, but I never, ever get ugly about yeah. that. I feel like that is an opportunity. 
to talk about what comes next. Yeah. And that's opening up the door for some other young woman so that when they see me, I'm not the only one that they've seen. And that's part of why we have people who don't even imagine that I could be a pilot. Well, that's because yeah. you, you are a rule breaker, you're a rebel, and you're opening the door for so many others. I just thank you so much, and I look forward to being on a flight and hearing you over the <laughs> overhead system. I can say, I know her! I know her! <laughs> Carol's book is called A Pair of Wings. It will be available in June.